Good morning and welcome to Metadel Online. I am Chloe Bishop and I'm the children's minister here at Metadel. We are so excited that you've decided to join us. If it's your first time, please comment and let us know. Message us here on Facebook or email us at info at metadel.org. We would love to connect with you. We have some awesome stuff in store for you this morning. We have some music, a message, and a time for response. And we just hope that everything you hear this morning encourages you and inspires you to know Jesus and grow in Him. Through the storm, He 
song could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Live for you. In holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever be. We feel, oh, we feel. In holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show. Good morning, Meadowdale. My name is Drew Startup, and I am the pastoral candidate that the search team is presenting to Meadowdale Church today, and it's an absolute honor to be here with you as a part of this. But my wife, Lauren, and I, we've been married for 16 years, and we have four kids. We have Price, Henley, Eleni, Kate, and then we also have Beckett. But I serve on the staff at Cartersville First Baptist Church currently. Uh, I've served there eight years, four years as the youth pastor, and then the last four years as the associate pastor. But but, uh, I'm extremely humbled to be uh, in this position and this uh, have this opportunity to today to be able to speak to you and to have the opportunity to, to possibly be the pastor here at Meadowdale. But here's my prayer simply that God's will would be done. But before we hop into God's word this morning, I would love uh, to be able to thank a few people. And the first group that I would love to thank is the search team. Listen, from Brandon to Brian to Jerry to Josh to Russell to Rodney, 
Rodney and to Rhonda. They have done a tremendous job and spent countless hours praying and meeting and praying and meeting some more. And listen, you picked the right people to represent your church. And uh, so their prayer has been that God would point them in the right direction to the person that is that God's calling to be the pastor for Metadale at this time in its history. And, and so I just want to say thank you to them. And if you get a chance, make sure that you uh, tell them thank you as well. But the second group of people that I would love to thank is you, the church. Listen, you have been faithful to pray, to pray for the search team, to pray that God would show you who that next pastor would be. But if it wasn't for your faithful and faith-filled prayers, this moment may not be happening today. So thank you, church. Thank you so much for praying. But last, the last group I want to thank is my family. Listen, I love my family more than you'll ever know. And I am so blessed to come from a, a godly heritage of, of people that love Jesus. But I do want to thank one person in particular in my family, uh, most importantly, and that's my wife, Lauren. My wife, Lauren, and I, we've been a, an item for 20 years, and like I said, we've been married for 16, but let me tell you about Lauren. She is a prayer warrior for me, for our family. She's a huge support for me, and I could not do ministry without her. It's a partner thing with us, and so we are so excited about this opportunity. But you know what? God has used you as the church. He's used the search team. He's used my family to be able to pray and to get us here to this moment today. So God is ultimately responsible and the one to be praised uh, for allowing this to happen here this morning. But I'm ready to dive into God's Word. I don't know about you, but if you will, if you'll go ahead and open up your Bible, we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 3, and we're going to look at uh, verses 1 and 2, and then verses 5 and 6. And I'm going to be reading from the CSB translation, which is the Christian Standard Bible. So if you got your Bibles ready, we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 3, and here's what it says. It says, My son, don't forget my teaching." But let your heart keep my commands, for they will bring you many days of full life and well-being. And then verse 5 says this. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways know Him, and He will make your path straight. Will you pray with me? Lord, we come before you today just simply asking that your Holy Spirit would teach us truth from your word today. Lord, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, uh, today I want to speak to you on this topic. And I believe it's a topic that a lot of people wonder, especially myself, but it's this, knowing God's will for your life. Knowing God's will is something that I've often Ask that question about, but have you ever asked that question, God, what in the world do you want me to do for you? Well, I remember when I was a senior in, in high school, my mom, she asked me one night, she said, Drew, what, what do you want to what do you want to major in when you go off to college here in just a few months? And so I began to think and and I said, you know what, mom? Uh, I've thought about it, but I, I know, I know. I love to be around people. I know that I like uh, I love baseball. Uh, I know that I love to to have the opportunity to speak to people and to teach others. But to be honest with you, Mom, like I truly don't know what God is calling me to do. So she said, Drew, what if you took an assessment? And this assessment, it takes your spiritual gifts, it takes your talents, and then it kind of combines them and just kind of gives you some options for what you might uh, be best fit for um, as a career. And so I was like, all right, well, shoot, I'll, I'll take it. So I took that assessment, and then the results came back, and the career that it said that best fit me was being a teacher. So I kind of got a plan together. Uh, I decided to go to Shorter College. I went to Shorter College for four years. I played baseball there. Um, I majored in secondary math education, but I also found my wife there, which was really important. But one of the things uh, that happened after graduating from Shorter is that the first job that I landed was teaching math at Cartersville High School. And I was coaching baseball there and also leading the FCA there as well. And I did that for nine years. But after those nine years in 2012, God decided that it was time for me to do something different. And to be honest with you, something that I had no clue that he had in store for me. But in 2012, he called me into church ministry where I became the youth pastor at Cartersville First Baptist Church. And that's where my wife, Lauren, and I and our family, we've been since, uh, since 2007. 
But as our church doubled in size over a period of three years, uh, God gave me the opportunity to transition into a different role as the associate pastor. And this was a new position that was created in order for me to help with ministry uh, behind the scenes, ministry on the forefront, and just making sure that ministry ran smoothly at Cartersville First Baptist Church. But in 2018, another turn uh, came about, and our pastor left to go pastor at another church. And so I was left to run the church along with some incredible leaders there for about 10 months. And during this time, God began talking to me and telling me, Drew, I'm using your experience that you had as a teacher and as a coach and as an associate pastor, and I'm using that to train you and to equip you to be a senior pastor one day. And being a senior pastor, to be honest with you, is something that I truly wrestled with, and I've really wrestled with it over the past year to year and a half, just trying to find confirmation and peace in my heart about what God, uh, what God's will was for my life. But over the past several months, I have leaned heavily on Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I even had it written at the top of my whiteboard in my office just because these verses gave me confidence about how I could know for sure what God's will is for my life. And so maybe you found yourself in the same position wondering, what is God's will for my life? Well, let's take a look at these verses a little bit deeper and let's uh, find out what instructions King Solomon gives to us about how we can confidently know what God's will is for our lives. So let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, In this background, King Solomon is the son of David and Bathsheba. And uh, uh, King Solomon authored the majority of these Proverbs found in this book, uh, in particular, the one found here in chapter 3 that we're going to look at today. But here's what a proverb is. It simply states a general truth or it gives a piece of advice. And God had given Solomon this special gift to have this wisdom to be able to share with others. But here in the first 12 verses of chapter 3, Solomon, he pairs these verses together. In the first verse, it gives us instructions. And then in the second verse, in the pair, it gives us a desired result or a promised result. So Solomon begins in chapter 3 with an instruction and then a promise to the reader. So the instruction in verse 1 says this. It says, My son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands. I don't know about you, but when the wisest man to ever walk the earth besides Jesus tells me to to store these these commands in my heart, my ears, they're going to perk up and I'm going to listen. And then here's what he says in verse 2. He gives this promise. He says, for they will bring you many days a full life and well-being. Now, that's a pretty good promise from what I can tell. But as we jump over to verse 5, Solomon gives us three steps for us to follow in verse 5 and at the beginning of verse 6 as to what we need to do in order to know God's will for our life. So here's step one. Step one to knowing God's will for your life is this. You must trust God with all your heart. Trust God with all your heart. The first part of Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What does it mean to trust God with all your heart? Well, when I hear the word trust, I can't help but go back to my youth camp days, and I think about trust falls. Do you all remember those? Yeah, you had about three levels of trust falls. The first trust fall was just simply you and another person. You had the spotter. They'd kind of cut their hands, you know, like this. And then you had the person that was falling, and they would assume the infamous locked arm positions. And all they would do is when the spotter would give commands, they would close their eyes and kind of lean back, and the spotter would catch them and then put them back where they were. So that was a simple one. That was level one. But then level two What you would do is you'd have a person in the middle, and then you'd have about six people that formed a circle, and so they would be your spotters, and you would once again, you'd assume that infamous locked arm position. You close your eyes, and what they would do is when they would tell you to fall, they would just kind of rotate you around in that circle. So that was level one and level two, but then level three of trust falls was only for the bravest of souls. You see, for that level three, there was a platform, whether it was a stage or whether it was a piece of wood that was up a little bit, and you didn't have to do this, but um, but I chose to do it a few times, and you would go, and the person falling would stand on that platform, and then you would have people uh, back and forth with each other, about eight to ten people with their arms interlocked right there, 
and you would assume that infamous locked arm position. You would close your eyes. You'd have to keep your legs stiff and straight, and you would say, spotters ready, and they would say, ready, and then you would say, falling, and they would say, fall, and you would fall back, and then, boom, you'd land in their arms, or at least you'd hope that you landed in their arms. But what happened there is for you to do those three levels, especially level three, you had to have complete trust that those people were not going to let you fall. So then that night, I don't know if you remember this, everybody would go and rededicate their life to Jesus. That's just how it worked at our youth camp. I'm not sure about yours, but that's just you know the way that we rolled. But those were the good old days. But the definition of trust is this, complete reliance on someone or something. When you choose to trust God, you are completely relying on His wisdom and strength to guide you through the circumstances in life. And when I knew that God was calling me to leave the classroom nine years ago to go into church ministry, I had to completely, completely trust God and His plan and His wisdom because I honestly didn't understand why He was changing my plan. But if I'd relied on my own wisdom or the wisdom of others, I would have been out of God's will. And that would not have been a good thing. But thankfully, I chose to obey. But Solomon says this. He says to trust in And who? He says to trust in the Lord, not yourself, not someone else, but specifically trust in God alone. But then Solomon says to trust him with all your heart. And this implies that you are to trust him with everything that you have, 100% of your life. Not just some of it, not just most of it, but all of it. So let me ask you this. Do you trust God with all of your heart? Do you truly believe that he can handle every situation in your life and that he knows what is best for you? If you lack trust in God, you won't follow the path he has specifically designed for you and you will find yourself living outside of God's will for your life. But to trust God with all your heart also means this. It means that you can't pick and choose uh, the areas that you entrust to Him while trying to keep the other parts to yourself so that you can have control. But to trust anything or anyone other than the Lord, you know what it results in? It results in disaster every time. So step one to knowing God's will for your life is you must trust God with all your heart. And then step two for knowing God's will for your life is simply this. Rely on God's wisdom and not your own. Rely on God's wisdom and not your own. The second part of Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, And do not rely on your own understanding. And to rely on something means to depend on or to lean on something or someone. Have you ever broken your ankle or your leg or your foot and you needed crutches to be able to help you get around? Well, I broke my ankle twice, once in fifth grade and once in seventh grade. The doctor gave me crutches to be able to get around. But why did I need crutches? Well, I needed crutches so that I could lean on them and so that I could depend on them instead of myself because if I wouldn't have had those crutches to lean on, I might have fallen or my my foot or my ankle wouldn't have heal, healed as quickly as it would have. And so it was something that I would have that I really, really needed to be able to get around and to be able to, to move about. But just as someone who, who requires crutches to get around leans on them for For support, we are to lean on God, not ourselves, for His understanding of the big picture and to make the right choices in life. We've got to lean on Him and not ourselves to understand these things. But why? Why should we rely on God and not somebody else? Well, Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says this. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways. This is the Lord's declaration. For as heaven is higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. It's one of my favorite verses. And then you've got Romans 11 verses 33 and 34, which says, Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments, how untraceable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? You see, if you were to rely on your own understanding in situations, you might choose the wrong path. I might choose the wrong path. But you see, human comprehension is limited, but God's understanding is limitless. 
God is the one who sees all things. He's the one who knows all things and who wants what is absolutely best for his children, even when they face the toughest situations in life. We don't always understand why he allows heartache and difficulty to happen, but we do know that he is a loving and trustworthy God based on what his word tells us. But your creator knows you better than anyone else. Why? Because he made you and he loves you. And he's created a specific path just for you. However, it's totally up to you whose wisdom you choose to rely on. Do you choose to rely on your own wisdom or you choose to rely on God's? It's your choice. But step two to knowing God's will for your life is to rely on God's wisdom and not your own. And then we get to the final step in knowing God's will for your life. Step number three, and here's what it says. You must know God personally and acknowledge Him in every area of your life. Know God personally and acknowledge Him in every area of your life. The first part of Proverbs 3, 6 says this, In all your ways, know Him. In all your ways, know Him. But did you know that there's a difference between knowing someone and knowing of someone? Well, let me show you what I mean. If I were to show you this picture of my kids right here, um, how many of you could tell me uh, what they love to eat for breakfast every morning? How many of you could tell me what makes them laugh or what makes them cry? Or how many of you could tell me what their favorite TV show is to watch right now? Well, to be honest with you, probably no one could except me or my wife or maybe somebody they know really, really well because there's a difference in knowing them and knowing of them. I know them personally. You don't. But that's something that we also have to think about when we think about our relationship with God. So there's a difference between knowing someone and knowing of someone. And that's why Solomon tells us that we must know God in all our ways. So the first step in knowing God is to have a relationship with Him. So let me tell you my story real quick. When I was nine years old, uh, I remember that I became very aware that my relationship with God had been broken. You see, I'd lied, I'd disobeyed my parents, and I'd made some other poor choices, but that's called sin. And you know what sin does? If this, is, if this is me and this is God, sin separates us from God. And so I understood that the only way that our relationship could be restored again is by understanding that, G that God sent His Son Jesus from heaven to earth and that Jesus lived a perfect life. And then He loved me so much that He paid the penalty for my sin by dying a brutal death on the cross. But He didn't stay dead. Three days later, he rose again, and he overcame death, and he overcame sin. And so because Jesus did that, I am able to be forgiven of my sins, and I can have my relationship restored with God again. And I know God personally, and you know what? He knows me. So I did just that when I was nine years old. I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and on that day, my broken relationship with my Heavenly Father was restored. And it can be done for you as well. And I'll give you a chance at the end uh, for you to know how you can make that happen. But in order for me to grow my relationship with God, you know what I have to do? I have to spend time with Him daily. I do. If you're in a relationship with someone that you love, uh, your desire wouldn't be to communicate with them only once a week, would it? Well, of course not. Your desire would be to communicate with them probably daily, probably multiple times a day. But if you have a personal relationship with Jesus, you grow that relationship by reading the Bible, which are His instructions to us, and then also by talking to Him through prayer and then listening to Him. But because I know God personally, I also know His character. He is good. He is loving. He is merciful, and He is gracious, and He is trustworthy, and He is so much more. But I know that I can trust God to do what's best for me in my life in every area and in every situation because He is my heavenly Father. And in Matthew 7, verse 11, it says, If you then who are evil, and this is Jesus talking to, to us humans, us human fathers, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? So I don't just know of God. I know God personally, 
and he knows me. Do you know God personally? Some translations use the word acknowledge in place of the word know in this verse. And when we acknowledge God, we're not merely admitting that he exists, but confirming that he is our Lord and our master who has authority over every area of our lives. But with each choice or situation, we acknowledge him by surrendering to his will and entrusting our lives to him fully. But with each choice um, that, you, that you already acknowledge to God, there may be some areas that you've already given over to him, but you know what? It's the ones where you attempt to ignore his influence that will cause you the most grief in life. So surrender, not just part of, but every area of your life to God. So the final step to knowing God's will for your life is simply this. Know God personally and acknowledge Him in every area of your life. And then comes this promise of the result at the end of of the end of verse 6. And this is what King Solomon says. He says that if you will trust God with all of your heart, and that if you will rely on God's wisdom and not your own, and that if you will know God personally and acknowledge Him in every area of your life, this is what King Solomon says that God will do. He will do this. Here's the promised result. Are you ready? He says that He will make His will clear to you. The last part of of Proverbs 3, verse 6 says this, and he will make your paths straight. Another translation says this, and he will direct your paths. You see, God has designed a specific path just for you in order to accomplish his will for your life. But it is completely up to you whether or not you follow the instruction Solomon gives in order for you to know God's will for your life. But you can choose to be like Jonah and run away from it, but know that your heavenly Father loves you way too much to let you stray too far and will provide a way for you to come back just as he did for Jonah. But know this, that his correction will not be easy. You see, we may stumble along the way or need redirection, but God repeatedly brings us back when we have a heart to obey him. And when we follow the Lord's guidance, He protects us from the side roads and and eliminates obstacles and confusion along the way. The straight path is the one for obedience. So listen, His path isn't always easy, but listen to me, it is always the best. So when you think you can do a better job of plotting your own course for happiness and prosperity, it may look good for a while, but eventually... You'll suffer the wear and tear that comes from taking unprotected detours. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and show you the way to go. With my eye on you, I will give you counsel. God will make your path straight by directing and protecting you. He prepares you to do His will. He equips you to carry it out, and then He leads you in accomplishing it. God knows what is best for you. But though you'll most likely face times of adversity, as we all do, you can be sure in those seasons that, as Romans 8, 28 says, it says that he will cause all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So if you trust God with all of your heart, and if you rely on his wisdom, and if you know him and acknowledge him in every area of your life, What will God do? He will make his will clear to you. So if there's one thing that I would want for you to take away from today, it's simply this. Here's the takeaway. Trusting, relying, and knowing God are required for knowing God's will for your life. Trusting, relying, and knowing God are required for knowing God's will for your life. You see, over the past five months, I've been asking God to show me his will for my life uh, concerning this opportunity at Meadowdale. And it's a huge decision because it not only affects me, it affects others as well, including my family and even you. But I've prayed and I've fasted and I've sought godly counsel. But more than anything, I've trusted God, I've relied on his wisdom, and I have acknowledged his authority in my life throughout this process. But that is why I honestly have this overwhelming peace and absolute confidence that this is what God is calling me to do. 
But are you trying to discover God's will and purpose for your life? If you are, here are some things, some action steps that I would encourage you to do. The first thing that I would encourage you to do is to pray. And prayer is simply having a conversation with, with God. Talk to Him, but then make sure that you listen because it's a two-way conversation. And make it a point to find a specific time and a specific place to get along with God every day and spend that time with Him and ask Him to reveal His will to you in His perfect timing and in His perfect way. So pray. Number two, the second action step is this, to fast. You see, fasting is the practice of abstaining from something, and most often people fast by abstaining from food. But whenever I have an important decision to make in my life, I make sure that I fast at some point or even throughout the process uh, of that. But spiritual fasting is pleasing to God, and it's done in a spirit of humility. But I've heard it said before that you can, you can pray without fasting, but you can't fast without praying because it allows your mind and your heart to focus on God and His will for your life. And then the last thing, seek wise, godly counsel. I've had five uh, godly people that I've confided in over the past year about becoming a senior pastor, and even those same five that I confided in in this situation and opportunity with Metterdale. But each one of them had been through a similar situation, and so I thought it would be wise to learn from them what questions to ask and, and how to respond and just simply ask them to pray for me. But you know what I never asked them to do? I never asked them to tell me what my final decision should be because you know who the only one is that knows that? God. So God is the only one that I asked for that. But if you're trying to discover God's will for your life, I encourage you to pray, to fast, and to seek wise, godly counsel during that time. And remember, if you trust God with all your heart, and if you rely on His wisdom, and if you know Him and acknowledge Him in every area of your life, He will make His will clear to you. Let's pray. God, thank you for this opportunity for us to open up your word. And Lord, I pray that today, through your word, that you will speak to someone, Lord, and they will turn to you and rely on you, Lord, and acknowledge you and trust you, God, to show them what your perfect will is for their life in your perfect timing and in your perfect way. In Jesus' name, amen. What's up, Metal Dell? I'm Brandon. If we haven't met, I'm a deacon here at the church. You just heard from Drew. He's our prospective pastor. We're actually having a vote for him to be the pastor of Metadale right now as I speak on campus. Uh, we're having two services on August 16th at 9 a.m. and at 11 a.m. We're also having drive-in voting for our members who can't come to campus due to health restrictions uh, or COVID. Uh, so if you want to vote and you can't come to the services, just be at the front lobby by 12 o'clock and one of our guest services volunteers will get you a ballot and you can vote right there. Guys, thank you so much for joining us online today. It means so much to us here at Metadel that you chose uh, to join us online. Don't forget about our giving online. You can give via our website. Uh, there's a red button in the top right hand corner of the screen. You can click it. You can give via text. We'll have that information on the screen. Or if you want to mail a check to the church, you can do that as well. Uh, if you have been giving online, thank you so much for your faith and giving. It means so much to us to help us spread God's word. Uh, campus groups are back at Meadowdale. They meet Sundays, 9.45 a.m. If you're not a part of a small group at Meadowdale, let us know. Find someone in guest services if you attend our services. Or if you don't, shoot us an email at info at and we'll get you plugged in to a small group because we believe that community is very important here at church. Guys, we love you so much and we hope that the information that you heard today helps you in your walk to know Jesus and grow in Him. Have a great week.